When we get all excited on release dates and buy top of the line products, sometimes our hearts are bigger than our wallets. Then a few days later when we are seated by ourselves, the endless ring of questions start clouding our minds. Like, I haven't even finished paying for the old one. Do I need all that firepower? Was it worth the investment? And it goes on and on. What if I told you the latest and greatest isn't always the solution? Buckle up and let's go for the ride. Here's why you need to get the M1 Mac Mini. First and foremost is performance, by far the most important metric in most people's eyes and the M1 Mac Mini is no slouch when it comes to this. The M1 processor is a mix of size and power and in this case it's miniature size shouldn't fool you cause boy, the amount of firepower that little chip carries is just mind blowing. Even though it's been around the block for almost 2 years, it's still punching. And I'm sure most of you know the specs, but just to bring you up to speed, the best model has an 8-core CPU with 4 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores, an 8-core GPU and a 16-core neural engine. When it comes to memory, it has 256 gigs of solid-state drive storage. In my opinion, for the average consumer, getting the best model and buying an external SSD like the Samsung T7 or the SanDisk SSD will give you the most bang for your buck, and here's why. When you upgrade the RAM and storage, you just end up paying the Apple tax and to put that into perspective, bumping up the unified memory to 16 gigs, you end up paying an extra 300 Australian dollars which is enough to buy a decent monitor and a keyboard on Amazon. Unless you're a professional who needs all the bells and whistles, a best model will do just fine. Getting into the nitty gritty of the performance, its 4 performance cores are quite powerful working in tandem with the 4 efficiency cores which means it's always ready to go and looking at Geekbench single core and multi core benchmarks, it's actually not that far compared to its successors and when you factor in the price, it's just mind boggling. More on the price a little later in the video. Still on the subject of performance, I know not everyone is a video editor but if you're a digital creator like me, it's optimized for editing apps like Premiere Pro, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, etc etc with a lot of the most suitable scenes it's Apple best. Ever since I doubled down on my YouTube journey, it's been my daily driver for over a year and a half and it's been carrying its own all this time. Not even once have I ever had the fans raving and it's been shredding through complex 4K edits, graphic intense timelines without breaking a sweat. While on the subject of content creation, here's how it compares to others when using Photoshop. Mind you, this is a computer that's been around the block for over 2 years. Now, that's pretty damn impressive. When it comes to heating, it doesn't heat up like the MacBooks despite being plugged in 24-7 and this is because it doesn't demand as much power that then has to be dissipated through heat, thus the little bit of heat it has to dissipate can be dealt with without the fans consuming more power from the battery. Furthermore, the Mac Mini's design and enclosure have been optimized for efficient heat dissipation. The entire enclosure acts as a heatsink which helps to spread the heat evenly and dissipate quickly. Moving along, the next up is the price. I'm sure for most of you, this would be the main motivation to get the M1 Mac Mini, putting in mind what you get in terms of performance in comparison to the price. For as low as 699 Australian dollars, which is the equivalent of 471 American dollars, you can get yourself one, but here's the kicker. You'll have to do your due diligence as not everyone has your best interest, especially in the second-hand market. Over here in Australia, sites like Amazon, Officeworks, Rebellos, Center.com, Kogan are good ones but your surest bet is on the Apple website refurbished section which would set you back around 1000 Australian dollars which is the equivalent of 675 American dollars and the beauty about it, you'll be getting a unit with a spec up storage of 512 gigs. Just a disclaimer, Apple isn't paying me to say this but in my opinion their refurbished store is a place to go when you want a good quality refurb. Thank me later. When it comes to gaming, the M1 Mac Mini just like the other Apple computers isn't a gaming rig per se but it can hold its own. Putting in mind the size of its chassis and the fairly tiny system that's inside, its thermal performance is just mind boggling. Like mentioned earlier, its fun rarely kicks in and the hardware runs on it with so much ease. In short, it takes a lot to heat up the M1 Mac Mini. I've enjoyed playing games like Minecraft which in all fairness isn't the best judgement metric when it comes to gaming performance but in any case that's not the sole reason I got this computer. Whenever I feel like gaming on my desk setup, I rig it up with my PlayStation 5. Speaking of which, if you haven't checked out my home office gaming setup, I'll leave a link of the video in the description box below. At this point, it's all been roses and sunshine but there are a few dark clouds. 
While the M1 Mac Mini is an excellent computer in many respects, there are a few drawbacks to consider. First and foremost, the M1 Mac Mini is limited to a maximum of 16 gigs of RAM, which may not be enough for some demanding applications, and this is because its memory architecture is not user upgradable. This means that users who need more RAM will have to consider more expensive models or look at other brands, but for the average user, this shouldn't be that big of an issue. And while on the subject of the user, for you to have the best user experience, you'll need an external monitor and keyboard, which is annoying, but when you factor in the price and performance output you're getting, it's better than some of the fully fledged computers in the market out there. Another thing to note with the M1 Mac Mini is, it's got fewer ports than some of the other desktop computers. It comes with two USB-C ports, two USB AirPods, an Ethernet and headphone jack port, and a HDMI port. If you're like me and need to connect multiple peripherals, that's where the dongle life comes in and by far the best when it comes to this is the Carl Digit TS3 Plus. If you'd like a deep dive into that, check out my updated desk setup for 2023. Still on the subject of limitation, you can only upgrade up to 2 terabytes of internal storage, which may not be enough for users with large media libraries or data intensive applications. Alternatively, buying an external SSD can be a solution, but this may be less convenient for some users. Another thing to be wary of is app compatibility. Some older software may not be compatible with the M1 chip, which means that users may have to upgrade to newer versions or find alternative software. For instance, Docker, which is a software platform that allows you to build, test and deploy applications quickly, had compatibility issues since the inception of the M1 chips. Speaking of issues, it's inevitable that your Mac Mini wouldn't have any, but what if I told you there's an app that could help you optimize your Mac to the absolute trick that it's supposed to be? Enter Clean My Mac. Ever since I found about Clean My Mac, my Mac user experience completely changed. From cleaning my computer of system junk, to getting rid of malware, checking my internet speeds, to clearing my browsing history including autofill forms, it's been a delight to use. Now I don't have to worry about someone autofilling documents using my details, as this has been made super easy thanks to Clean My Mac. Use the links in the description box to check out their store and product page. And just a disclaimer, I get a small commission out of it, so your help will go a long way. In short, the M1 Mac Mini is a powerful, efficient and versatile computer that is well suited for a wide range of tasks. Its energy efficiency, advanced M1 chip and small form factor make it an excellent investment for anyone in 2023, whether you're a student, a creative professional, a programmer or just a casual user, this is the machine for you. Well, that sums it up. If you found this video helpful, a sub to the channel would be appreciated and don't forget to like, share and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. To see how it fits in my desk setup, check out this video of my 2023 updated desk setup. People of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.